be here. It's good to be preaching today. Um, now, this isn't really a brag, but this is the second time I've been standing up at a church this weekend. I've been basically from the whole weekend in church because I was at a wedding yesterday, and I was asked rather last minute to read at the wedding, um, which was it was it was which was lovely. It was it was a sort of an honour for my friend, but. Um, the Bible that I often use when I preach isn't this one, it's a smaller one, and, um, and I mentioned last week about the fact that my bag had been stolen and in it were my glasses, and I got up at this, in this huge church, that had, I must have had 500 people, or maybe not 500, 300 people in, wow. and I kind of, I, I looked up and I was like, oh my goodness, and then I looked down at my Bible and I was just like, I just, I just, it was, so I did a lot of dramatic pauses, which people didn't realise, and I was, I was this incredible exercise of keeping my cool, just looking down, just, just looking until I found where I was again. Um, but that, so that was kind of fun. So it's nice to be preaching, right? You know, I can lift my Bible to my face if I need to. It's not, it's not the end of the world. Um, so um, I'm sure some of you. Uh, know it from speaking to me etc um, but I've just started uh, my new job uh, which is in London and it's kind of counted to basically but specifically been work I'm work starting to work in tax which is interesting tax is something which um, always brings a lot of moral and ethical questions quite quickly uh, into the into the forefront um, I'm sure many of you have seen in uh, in the papers recently that well it's, it's not even specifically recently it's just all the time there'll be some article about amazon made 12 billion pounds and paid nothing in tax in england and how does this work and stuff um i was reading an article this morning entitled facebook's outrageous uk tax bill pu puzzles financial experts and the thing that's interesting about this is facebook isn't breaking the law when they pay you know Few million instead of a few billion pounds of tax. They're not breaking the law, but there is a, like an argument that is that is that ethically is that right? Should they pay more tax? You know, a company of that size. If we're talking millions and billions of pounds. If that went into our government, that could then, you know, come back to the people who aren't directly benefiting from Facebook's success. So you know, so this is the thing that's interesting about taxes that it throws up all sorts of uh, moral and ethical questions. Um, sorry, I lost my note. There it is. Um, and this, I think this has been true for a long time. Um, in Bible times, um, tax, the tax collectors were, of course, uh, unscrupulous individuals who um, morally were not at the top of the ladder. Um, and and um, so that's what I thought we'd talk about. We talked about Zacchaeus today, because I thought, you know, I can add a, something of a personal dynamic to this now. And I, I wouldn't go as far as to say that I, re, I relate to Zacchaeus, but um, if, you guys, if you guys all think that I'm going to be some sort of evil tax man, then you're welcome to think that. We'll have to see. Um, and, but yeah, no, so tax is interesting. Ben Franklin, Benjamin Franklin said, um, you, well, I'm sure you've heard of the phrase, you know, death taxes and insert something that always happens. Um, uh, he said, and so that came from him when, when the American Constitution had just been written up, he wrote to someone in France, I don't know, someone important in France, and he said, our new, constitu our new constitution is now established and has an appearance that promises permanency, but in this world nothing can said to be certain except death and taxes. So, you know, that's tax for us. Um, <laughs> So, uh, shall we, can we turn in our Bibles to Luke chapter 19? We're going to read about Zacchaeus, which is a story that I'm sure many of us know, uh, know well. But um, I hope that we can take some nice points out of it, because I read it recently, obviously, starting my job, and, and I was pleasantly surprised with some things that I could take from it. So, um, let's read from verse 1. Uh, Jesus entered Jer uh, Jericho and was passing through. A man there by the name of Zacchaeus, a man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. So I'm going to pause there and have a little look at the way Zacchaeus is when he hears that Jesus is coming. Um, actually, I, could, I, can eat, I can talk about this wedding again today, because I found myself sat right behind 
had this huge pillar in the church, so I actually couldn't basically see anything that was going on. So you can imagine, it was slightly stressful when I had to go up and read, because I was trying to sort of see where I was actually even meant to go, and, you know, jump up and down and stuff. But it can be really frustrating when you can't see something that you want to see. Um, another thing that I remember is in the, the Queen's, I think it must be Golden Jubilee, 2002 or three, that kind of time, yeah. I remember I live very near Bushy Park in south southwest suburbs of London and I think she had some sort of procession through the park or some there was some event in the park and I, I just had this memory of her hat that was all I could see I was a little boy and I was so desperate to see the queen in the flesh and all I saw was that her hat and, um, so I you know that was, I guess I needed a sycamore fig tree or something to go with but um but no I think um what's interesting here about Zacchaeus is that um, this was Jesus coming, this wasn't the Queen, you know, even though I think the Queen's great, this was Jesus, you know, the man who was causing such a stir in, uh, in the area at the time. And I really love the fact that he didn't let his height stop him from getting to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I think, when we think about that, it's actually, I know we, we later read about him changing his heart, but I think this is like an early sign of, of his mm -hmm. heart, is that he, he knew Jesus was coming, and I suppose you could think, well, maybe he'd want to sort of shy away, maybe he'd want to, you know, avoid someone who's probably going to not be condoning everything he did. But he had this heart of getting past what was stopping him getting to Jesus. Um, so that's my first point, is never, to, um, never giving up seeking Jesus, because I think things can... Get in, if we think of his, his height and that tree is sort of metaphorically, things can get in the way of us getting to Jesus. Yeah. Mm. So let me ask you, what are those things in your life? Um, what can sometimes stop you getting to Jesus? Mm. Um, for me, at the moment, it's busyness. Just gen I mean, I know it's very general, but I'm trying to adjust to having to get up early in the mornings and not having any time. Yeah. Well... I know you, most of you will be used to this, but I've come from a, basically a gap year of nine months of sitting around doing nothing. So it really feels like I have just no time for anything. And so, whereas before I could just lie around in bed, get up whenever I want, make a nice cup of tea, go up to my room, maybe read my Bible a bit, or even still sometimes not, even though I have all that time. Um, but now that I have no time, that's something that, that for me can be a bit of a barrier to me going to God and... and um, and seeking Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, other things are, you know, sort of trivial things like just, um, I, I love watching videos on YouTube and the, the algorithms they've got are so good now that they always put, I just, I, you know, I just think, oh, I'll just watch something as I'm walking home or whatever and then they show me all these other videos that I'm like, oh, I do want to see that, I do want to see that. <laughs> so they, they, know, they probably know me better than me. <laughs> They show me all sorts of things. About, I think you can probably tell a lot about someone by looking at their YouTube page and seeing what's there. Um, so, so yeah, but, but things like that, it can just take time, take time away from me. And then, and then I, you know, even if at the time I might think, oh, that's you know, fun video, you know, I don't know, someone falling off a skateboard or something. But then, but then it's just like, you know, I put my phone away. And I'm like, well, that was. What, what did I get out of that? That was a yeah. long moment of sort of chuckling to myself. But if that's at the expense of going to God and seeking Him, then it's not actually really a laughing matter, I guess. Mm -hmm. So that's something um, for me um, that can be in, you know, get in the way of seeking Jesus. But so from my first point, my invitation for you guys is to think about what are those things in your life that can get in the way. Um, and to try, I think the challenge here is for us all to try and be like Zacchaeus in that way and to not let them... Um, get in the way to take like the, that proactive move to try and yeah. see go to and see God yeah. you know mm -hmm. as a priority mm -hmm. um, I'd like to share a verse from Acts 17 uh, you don't have to turn if you don't want to but um, also feel free to read along it's Acts 17 verse 26 it says from one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth and he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he's not far away from any of us. I think that's such a wonderful verse when we're thinking about seeking God, knowing that God is 
isn't far from any of us. Mm. It's yeah. just wonderful. It's not like we have to, you know, seek him for 10 years and then we'll find him. You know, God's right there waiting for us to seek him, which is, what, which is a lovely thought. Um, let's read on. Um, so, from verse 5, it says, um, When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. Um, I think, I mean, this is quite a short passage in, in the Bible, but despite that, I still think this is, you know, this is quite di- like direct, isn't it? Um, Jesus sees Zacchaeus up in the tree and says, you know, what does he say? I must, come down immediately, I must stay at your house today. I don't know if anyone has said that to you before. It's just said, you know, has just turned up and said, I must stay at your house immediately. Um, I don't know how you'd react to that. Um, I, to some of my, my best friends from school, we have a little, there's a little group of five of us. We were all at school together, and two of my friends were, were always quite sort of, I don't know, they were, I don't know how to describe them, but they always... They really just were very sort of mischievous and took advantage of the fact that we were friends. And what happened one time was, I, I was not at all involved in this, but one weekend, I think after, you know, when we went to school, they decided to just drive around to my other friend's house. Um, they, were, they had met up and I think they just got bored of each other's company. They thought, right, let's go, let's drive around to Robbie's house. So they drove around to my friend Robbie's house, completely uninvited and unannounced. They, invite, they effectively invited themselves over to his house without telling him. So they so they knocked on his door at you know I don't know two o'clock on a Saturday afternoon, and my friend Roy just shut the door in their face. <laughs> he just said, "Sorry guys, not not interested today." And there was all sorts of fallout from this in the coming weeks. But it was I mean I to be honest I just found it hilarious because I, I wasn't directly involved. But two of my friends invited themselves over to my other friend's house and. I, if I was in that situation, I probably wouldn't have been able to just shut the door in their face. I would have just, even if I didn't want to see them, I would have probably let them in. But um, Bobby was just, so I'm not, not having any of it. In his defence, I think they've been winding him up for the last few weeks. I think they, they sort of thought, let's go to his house without telling him, and, you know, wind him up. But he just, he wasn't having any of it. But I think it's funny because, again, Zacchaeus is, I mean, probably would have been surprising if he did that to Jesus with such a big crowd following him and stuff, but it doesn't just say that he welcomed him, it says that Zacchaeus came down at once and welcomed him gladly. Um, And I think, again, we can see part of Zacchaeus' heart here. Um, And as I touched on earlier, if we think about what Zacchaeus would have thought was going to happen, you know, did Zacchaeus think Jesus was going to come around and be like, I'm such a fan of your work, you know? <laughs> you know he probably knew that, that this wasn't going to be like a completely comfortable, you know, um, evening. You know, this was going to, he was probably going to be challenged by Jesus. But despite that, he actually welcomed Jesus gladly. And I think that's something, again, for us to try and imitate. Um, at my last job in the software company where I was working, um, Long story short, I was pretty, it wasn't a good fit. I wasn't very good in the role and I was really struggling to do well. And on my probationary period, we had, I had catch-ups every week with my, um, the, the woman who was training me and my boss, basically. And they'd ask me how it was going and everything. And the first couple were really, you know, informal and, and easy and, it, you know, didn't really understand what was going on, but it was fine because I'd been there for one or two weeks. But then about a month and a half, you know, six weeks in, when I still didn't really know anything that was going on, they started to get a bit more awkward and challenging and difficult, basically. And I would go into those knowing that I was going to be challenged about how I'd been doing it. You know, ask loads of questions about what I was doing to show I understood it, but I mean, I didn't, so it was difficult. Um, and th- they were certainly interactions that I just didn't welcome gladly at all. I completely sort of dreaded it and would have avoided it if I could. Um, and I, but I think in a, in a spiritual analogy, Zacchaeus, it's not that dissimilar maybe for Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus wasn't doing well spiritually prior to this interaction. And yet he welcomed Jesus gladly. I think that's actually, again, we see his, uh, you know, what he says to show his heart changed later on. But I think when we actually look at the signs that 
that are there before he talks with Jesus in his house, we can see that his heart was, was already, you know, making good steps spiritually. Um, so yeah, despite, you know, a potentially, even though obviously Jesus was very, um, was always so loving towards everyone he met, but Zacchaeus probably did have a sense that this could be challenging. And despite that, he welcomed it gladly. So the questions for us to think about, what's, what is God doing in your life at the moment? And, you know, it might, there might be, there might well be things that are challenging in your life. I've got um, exams and stuff coming up for, for work that um, need, that I just need to pass. And I haven't had exams with this kind of stress for many years because at uni, you know, it all, it all a- averages across the years. So after a couple of years of doing fine, the next exams become slightly less important. And, you know, it's all okay. But now I'm back into this mindset of I need to pass this exam. And if I don't pass this exam, I'm in trouble. So that's something which um, is quite, it's quite challenging for me at the moment. But um, is there anything God's calling you to do? Or is he pushing you in a certain direction that maybe makes you feel that way? Makes you feel like, oh, I don't know if I want, if I don't know if I want to be involved with that. I don't know if I want to, you know, I don't know if that suits me or whatever. Um, you know, or is, you know, maybe you even feel dread about something that's coming up that you feel like God has let happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, like Zacchaeus, let's think about how we can welcome those things gladly mm-hmm. and welcome um, the fact that we know that through things that are challenging, we grow and spiritually, mm-hmm. we it's a spiritually good thing, really, which is which is wonderful because that is making progress spiritually is more important than making progress in our jobs or in our, you know, even in, maybe even in our relationships with other people. Making progress in our relationship with God is just the ultimate, really. Um, so how can you gladly welcome those things? Um, let's read on. Um, uh, where am I reading from? Um, yes, verse 7. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Mm. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save what was lost. So my third point is working for Jesus. Now Zacchaeus' response was was so like immediate, and I think maybe that's a result of the fact that he, you know, his heart was changing in the run up to this meeting. But it's quite it is quite an amazing transformation, really. This guy had probably been basically stealing money off people for his whole career, um, and you know to make this kind of U-turn is a big thing for him. Um, and you know I love the way he sort of says you know look Lord he wants to show Jesus that he's changed and that's and sort of share that that positive change in his life with Jesus um, so um, I'd like to invite us all to reflect about what we can do for God in a similar kind of way um, maybe some of those challenges that we were talking about just now and welcoming them Maybe some of those will actually bring opportunities to work for Jesus and work for God. Um, for me, uh, one of the things I've been learning um, is about trusting God and being having like a childlike trust in God. Um, as I think I might have shared about this before, but over the summer I was working at um, uh, a kids' summer camp with that Shanae runs, and that was really interesting because I then also read a bit of um, C.S. Lewis's book called The Great Divorce. I don't know if anyone's read it. It's really worth a read. It's very interesting. It's about people from hell going up to heaven and being offered the chance to repent. And it, and it follows lots of characters who, you know, so two of them, the two that I was reading about were sort of theologians and there might have been a vicar, a vicar and a theologian or bishop, even bishops or something. But one of them had actually that sort of intellectual study of theology had actually become a 
a bit of a veil for spirit, a spiritual sort of decay that might happen. Mm. And so there's a very interesting conversation between these two, and the one who's in heaven is pleading with his friend, saying, do you not remember a time when you asked questions because you wanted answers? Because not to just sit and ask interesting questions and just sort of think about them but not really resolve them. And working at the kids' camp, you really see that kids just, they ask a question, and then when they get the answer, they just completely accept it. Not well, most of the time. But you know, if they're, if, they're, if they're asking about, if they're asking about, maybe not if they're asking if they can play on the Xbox, but maybe if they're asking a question, looking to learn something, they just accept, they trust your response and accept it so much. Um, I was just quite struck by this because because these kids, you know, I, I, put, I had a, a staff hoodie and a lanyard on, but really I was a complete stranger to them. But because I was, you know, this staff member or whatever, they have a degree of trust. And I think, you know, we don't have a stranger as God. We have God that we know uh, and love. And I think, so for me, that's something, it's a bit of a digression, but for me, that's something that I'm trying to learn to try and, try and trust God in a more childlike way. Um, uh, well, I'll share one more thing about that, which is that I have my hair cut the same place every time. Um, and the, the woman is called Jeannie's Barbers, and Jeannie is a real sort of, it's, it's really nice because it's, it's, it's in a high street where there's, you know, there's lots of, like every high street, the chains coming in, little independent places slowly closing down. But she's been there well, as long as I can remember. And, uh, and I was sat there once under all the, the big sheet that they put you under. And I realised that they don't have they don't have a card machine. There. They only take cash, and you know everywhere seems to be take card these days. So I was like, oh, what am I going to do? You know, I can't. I was halfway through there, <laughs> and, um, and so so I said, um, when she finished, I said, I'm sorry, I don't have any cash. Can I can I just go and get some out? And she was just like, and she was like, yeah, sure, and you know walked out and. The thing that I thought about that was obviously she trusted me, but it, but her trust like led her to that action mm. so instantly. She didn't, mm. she didn't just sort of, you know, it's easy to like with with our, with friends and stuff. You, we'd all say that we trust our friends now, but then saying we trust our friends now versus in a situation where we have to rely on that is mm. it's a different thing. And so she just trusted and acted on it so instantly. So that's something that I'm trying to work on, and uh, you know, something that I'm trying to. Um, work for God in. You know, Zacchaeus had his, um, you know, his issues with being corrupt and, st and stealing money, as a lot of the tax collectors did back then. And he um, responded with um, this work for Jesus of um, giving away half his possessions to the poor. Um, now, I want to stress, I'm not not um, saying that um, preaching kind of works as with too much emphasis, but I. I just want to point out the fact that Zacchaeus had this attitude of showing Jesus what, he's, what was going on in his life and the progress he was making. And he had such a wonderful heart, quite a childlike heart, where he's got, look, this is, what, this is what I'm doing. And I think there's an invitation for us there to share the things that are going on in our lives where we can work in a similar way, to share those with God and to, you know, maybe even literally to pray to God and be like, look, God, I'm really giving, giving it my all in this situation, or um, maybe that could even be a prayer for something that's happening in your life at the moment. Um, I think, you know, the gift for the poor coming up, as we've heard, is something which um, has been something that I've been thinking about as well, thinking about um, how I can... Mm -hmm. move around. Move around. Um, oh, well, sorry about that. Obviously, not waving my arms enough. Um, but no, so, so yeah, um, let me invite you all to think about what um, the, things, the things in your life that you can maybe um, show God um, what works. You can. Like, just almost commit to him. It might be with the gift of the poor that you can, you know, commit something to him financially. It might be, um, you know, 
giving in a non-financial way to someone that you know in your life that has needs at the moment. Um, it might even be, you know, some just a personal spiritual thing that's difficult at the moment where you can, you know, give to God by sharing it with someone if you feel like you need to share it and you haven't yet. Or, um, or else it could be starting to study that thing, that topic or that area in the Bible that you think, oh, I probably should, that would be good for me. We haven't got around to it yet. Um, so, to wrap up, Zacchaeus had this heart of getting to Jesus despite the things that challenged him um, in his life. He got around them and made, made sure that he got to Jesus. So what are the things in your life that could be a bit like that? He then welcomed the consequence of that gladly. It's definitely something that I can find hard when things don't go the way I want them to. Welcoming them gladly can be really challenging. And then he was just so excited to share what was going on, the spiritual change was going on in his life through the circumstances he was in. Um, so let me encourage you to think about what sort of stands out from his character there that we can try and emulate this week. Um, and just to finish, um, I'll just read the last two verses again. Um, Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save what was lost. Now we all know that spiritually we've been lost, and that Jesus has come to save us. And I think that's just a wonderful message to take with us into the week. Um, Jesus calling this tax collector who was, you know, as it said earlier, looked on by society as a sinner. And Jesus ends by calling him the son of Abraham, mm -hmm. which is such an honour, really. Um, and I'm sure some, there were some very indignant Pharisees in the background there when he said that. But that's what Jesus really will say to us when we show him what we can do for him, mm -hmm. which is a wonderful thing to think. So, um... That's all I have for us this afternoon. Um, I think we've got one more song before yep. we have fellowship. Yep.